Hey, welcome back everybody to my channel, Twitch Beard. I'm Twitch, the Bearded Ticker, and this is episode two of Own Your Truth. And today I am going to have a very special guest on with us. He is one of my closest friends. Uh, heck, I call him my best friend. Uh, he is the owner of a Bandbox Fella. He is known as Chronic Mike, and he's here to talk with us today. So please enjoy the show. Remember to hit that like button. So give me that thumbs up, helps people uh, see it on their feed. So it definitely helps the channel. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below for me and Mike. Um, you know, contribute to the conversation if you'd like down in the comments. I love interacting with everybody. Um, and I share with everybody that you know. I definitely would appreciate that. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me so you don't miss out on the next episode coming up. But thank you guys very much for rocking with me. I truly appreciate everybody's support, all you viewers out there. Remember to stay strong, stay healthy, and most important, stay positive. And without further ado, I'm going to bring in our guest. Thank you guys. Hey, there's that guy. What's up, Mike? How are you tonight? Hey, what's going on, George? How are you, buddy? Not much, man. I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. So for the audience, I know I already kind of just said your name. I did tell the audience before who I was going to talk to. Uh, but, you know, again, for them, go ahead, tell us your name and a little bit about yourself. All righty. Well, um, first off, thanks for having me. I appreciate the invite. My pleasure. Um, my name is Mike. Um I am a husband, a father, uh, entrepreneur. Um, you know, I'm, I'm many things. It's kind of hard to, to put yourself in a box sometimes. But, um, you know, I think uh, today is, you guys are going to see a different side of me that uh, maybe some of you guys have never seen before. Um, hear some stories and, um, you know, open up about some things that have happened or, you know, I've experienced in my life. So for the most part, I'm a very positive person, you know, honest, true to who I am, how I feel. But, um, you know, we all got demons that we battle. So, um, and struggles and stuff, but we're going to share those tonight and, uh, hopefully it'll help somebody out there and maybe bring a little bit of light or whatever to, uh, to their situation. So. Definitely. Definitely. That's a really good intro. Um, definitely appreciate you coming on. Um, you know, I, I know when I talked to you about the uh, the segment, <clears throat> you had definitely had offered uh, to come on. You said that you'd love to, um, you know, chop it up and you know um, help somebody else out there, um, which is you know definitely mm -hmm. uh, what I'm about. And you know that. Um, and for everybody that doesn't know, he is the owner of Bandbox Fell. If you guys bearded brothers out there, anybody bearded that's watching, make sure to go out and show Mike some support. Check out his page, bandboxfell.com. Super good products, and he's a super cool guy. Like I said before, he's one of my best friends. I have nothing but love for Mike. So let's get started. So um, in regards to mental health um, or inner demons or anything that you struggle with, um, what is it you think that you struggle with the most? As far as mental health wise, um, you know, I think a lot of stuff for me is uh, situational. If that, I don't know if that really makes sense, but I'll try to explain, um, you know, whether it's a uh, uh, you know, certain times in my life I've noticed have been uh, more difficult than others as far as mentally trying to push through, um, you know, situations or whatever things happening. And, you know, if if I like start feeling like I'm losing control of, you know, a situation and not like a small situation, but, you know, what I'm talking like right. major things, right. it'll bring out anxieties and depression and, you know, different kind of thoughts that you know, make things even worse. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I've had anxiety. I mean, I think we all, you know, regardless of where you are in your life, we've all had some sort of anxiety, whether it's an anxiety for a job interview or just anxiety because you just woke up and you're freaking out. I've had the anxiety in the middle of the night, you know, woke up in the middle of the night, sweating and kind of just freaking out about nothing. Um, you know, and then, I, that's probably what I struggle with more um, than anything is just having anxiety, stress, 
I think a lot of it's self-induced because I expect so much more from myself. You know, I want to be, you know, I want to be the best I can be. So I put a lot of pressure on myself and, uh, and then I stress out when I feel like I'm failing and then I bring anxiety on, you know, um, and other things that I've struggled with was depression a little bit, but I think with that, it was a lot more situational things that made, you know, okay. happened to me. Um, and it just brought out, you know, the, that side of sadness or anger, you know? Um, so I remember the anxiety and depression is two things that I've struggled with. All right. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I agree with you though. Yeah, um, definitely everybody has um, anxiety on it on, on some certain level, um, whether it be small or big. Um, I think that's something that we can all relate to. Like you said, it could be a job interview, or like you said, if you wake up in the middle of the night. Um, <clears throat> then you know, being an entrepreneur, um, I can only imagine that it's 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 hard. It's hard when you feel that you're failing, but you really aren't. So that anxiety um, definitely can take over and get the best of you. I'm sure, right? Yeah, absolutely, bro. I mean, you know, I mean, you've talked many times, you know, that I, I want to, you know, be the best and produce the best products and, you know, be successful and, um, you know what I mean? And it's stressful at times. And so it does get anxious, you know, I do get anxious, but um, yeah, it's, it's all part of the process though. You know what I mean? Right. right, so, right definitely. so as a child, uh, were you affected by the mental health struggles that you have today or is it something that has come? Yeah, I mean, no, yeah, I definitely had a lot of anxiety um, growing up, um, whether it was because of things that were happening in school, um, you know, whether it was because of getting, you know, even though I was a bigger kid, you know, I was getting maybe, you know, bullied or, or you know, harassed or even, you know, getting jumped or whatever. Um, so that brought on a lot of anxiety. Um, and then, you know, as a kid, you don't really know how to, you know, you don't know how to like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, like mentally, you, you don't really know how to take things and how to uh, process them. Yeah, it is. So, um, you don't have uh, many coping skills as a child. It's something that you have to learn. So that, that, make, right. that makes it hard. Yeah. So, I mean, having issues, we know, you don't understand things while something almost happened to you it bring out, you know, anxieties and, you know, borderline depression and stuff, you know, being sad or not understanding, you know, what the, you know, what the hell's going on. So, um, yeah, I mean, it started at a younger age that I can remember, you know. And how do you think that that affected you as a child? Um, you know, I, I think if anything, it made me, uh, a better man um as a, as a child it i guess it let me see here i i don't really know man because a lot of it and this is going to sound crazy as much as it bothered me um a lot of it didn't because like it was in the moment it bothered me and i would stress out and freak out but then i would be able to move on from it and i would eventually you know what i'm saying like i didn't right. hold on right. to it for too long so um but it definitely has affected me more as an adult, just the way that I interact with certain, you know, certain people, groups, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's just certain things that I go through my mind in certain situations that probably wouldn't, had I not experienced some of the things I did growing up. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so, how, so you said you were, you were bullied. Um, sometimes you were jumped, uh, it just played a role in your anxiety. So how did you handle um, bullies as a child? Uh, well, uh, usually head on. <laughs> I used, uh, um, I just get it in with them, you know what I mean? Um, and fight. So it was, it just, that's where it led, you know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't, it came to the point where it was like, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold it in and, you know what I mean, run. And I was gonna just go right at it. And uh, sometimes it was, it worked out. Sometimes it didn't. Uh, right. But right. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it just the way it is the way that I was taught to handle it. You know what I mean? Just go at it. And uh, you can't, you know what I mean? You can't control how they're going to act, but you can control, you know, you, you know what you can do about it. And you know what I mean? If I was going to be bullied physically, then I was going to defend myself. And 
You know what I mean? And actually, I think it made me a very quick-witted person because mm-hmm. being bu- bullied verbally, you know what I mean? It makes you uh, got to be quick on your feet. You know what I'm saying? You got to be quick to, to, to clap back. And uh, not not saying necessarily that's always the right thing to do, but, you know, you can't, you got to hold your own sometimes. So that's kind of what I, that's kind of how I, uh, how I did it. And once I was able to learn, you know, to kind of do that, it, uh, it got a little easier for, for myself and, you know, I don't know if it necessarily is the right way to, to do it or to cope or whatever, but that's the way it played out for me. <laughs> right. I mean, sometimes you just gotta, you know, take uh, the cards that life has given you and, and, and make something, you know, have some positive out of it, it whichever way you can. Um, I know that sometimes it is hard to take that curveball that's thrown at you and, and, you know, hit a home run with it. But if you can do it, then more power to you, you know? Um, yep. it's, it's just, you know, it's sad that, that kids have to be so mean. And at the end of the day, it doesn't help anybody. It, it, that's why the world is the way it is. No one's uplifting anybody. Um, everyone just me, me, me. And at the end of the day, no one wins. Um, and it's just unfortunate. And I just feel like, although they, people do talk about bullying, I don't really feel like it's being really, I don't think it's, you know, that's going anywhere with at times. I feel like it's still, you know, it's still a big issue that kids are still getting bullied despite all the campaigns that are happening. And um, I think at the end of the day, it just definitely starts at home. Um, and, and sometimes um, the kids who are being bullied are actually kids being bullied at home by, by their family, um, which is mm-hmm. oh, yeah, it's really sad. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, but I mean, and then I also look at certain things, you know, like a lot of times though it can help build a little bit of character you know what i mean or, or help strengthen you in other ways because life isn't going to be easy is you know i mean not saying life is always terrible right i mean obviously i have an amazing life i'm very blessed I'm, I'm super happy you know to be where i am today and grateful and um but you know life isn't always rainbows and cupcakes and positivity and you know what I mean I know a lot of people put that fake persona on like life is perfect and every IG post is laughing with your kids or you know you got the perfect day and the perfect life but you know we all know behind the closed doors we all have struggles we all have you know issues that we got to deal with and uh I think being able to have some of those issues early on for some people at least for myself I think it made me a better person. Honestly, it made me a, a person to, you know, build a little bit of thick skin and be able to take on the stress and struggles of life and, uh, you know, and not take them so personal. No, just definitely. Realize, oh, man, this, this is what life is. And, you know what I mean? Make the best of what it is and go at it head on. Right on, right on. Yeah. Um, I feel like the time that we grew up, I mean, you're a bit older than I am, but you're still a kid that grew up in, you know, through like the 80s, 90s. <laughs> I feel like back in that, in that time, it wasn't like it's common for parents to be like, Hey, you know, depression, anxiety is something real and it's a big issue. Let's go and find some help for it. Um, I feel people were more closed off to that idea um, than they are today. As if your child came home to you and said, um, you know, I, I just feel sad and I don't know why you, you know, be inclined to go find them some sort of help, um, whether it be a counselor or a therapist. I feel like back when I was growing up, that wasn't something that parent would really say to a child. They'd be like, you know, be tough, um, mm-hmm. you know, be strong, you know, uh, if you get bullied and it comes down to it, stick up for yourself and what you believe in and, you know, fight it out. And I do agree that, 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 that like you said, that's not always the answer, but sometimes it's the only answer that's there. Um, mm-hmm. And that is one way of coping with it. Um, not saying that it's, that it's right or wrong. I don't agree or disagree. I mean, sometimes, you know, you have to defend yourself. Yes. Um, but I, like I said, I just, it's so different nowadays. Like the littlest things could be bullying now because everybody gets offended for like the littlest things. So it's definitely different times. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do believe that it, did, it does make you <laughs> that little bit of struggle. I mean, the struggle makes strong people. Um, so that bit of struggle that you endure at, in the end does, I feel as well, that it does help you mold you into the person that you are today and, and make you a bit stronger. Um, and like you said, just thick skinned at the end of the day, if somebody at the street, going down the street said something to you, you'd probably be more than likely to just brush it off, not even care. Um, as to where somebody else, you know, they might get offended and turn around and be like, well, what'd you say to me? Or, you know, make a conflict that or something that really doesn't even be a conflict at that point. Yeah. I mean, you're never going to have rainbows without rain. Right. 
Well, so, definitely. Um, it's, it's just part of, you know what I mean? Just roll with it and keep moving, you know? I mean, at the end of the day, we make our lives what they are. Obviously, certain people are put in situations to where their lives may be a lot worse off, you know, whether it's financial or health-wise or something, right? But, <clears throat> you know, generally speaking, I think, you know, as long as you got your house and, you know, you got, you know what I mean, some ambition, you know, you make your life and what you want it to be, you know? I mean, one man's, you know, uh, treasure might be another man, you know, trash, right? So whatever, right? you know what I mean? It's Everybody's got their own perception of what, uh, you know, success is and what happiness is and, you know what I mean? Um, so for me, it's just finding my finding my own happiness, you know what I'm saying? What I find to be happy and what makes me feel good and is, is what's most important, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, no, definitely, I agree. So, um, but without the them struggles and you know them, you know them tough times, man. It, they, I don't think them bright days will you know be so bright. So I'm happy for them struggles. No, definitely, I agree. Like those those dark days do make the the good days great. Um, they make them feel uh, what I would like to describe as warm and fuzzy. If I had to choose something, <laughs> describe it as warm and fuzzy. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> um so as a kid that you felt you know a bit depressed and a bit anxious is that something that you conveyed to your parents at all no, no. okay so they, they just didn't did they suspect it maybe and did no, they ask or, it was no? never no it wasn't like that i mean my family become you know hard workers everybody worked you know or i was in school and you know, life was a routine for the most part. Um, you know, dad got home late from work. You know, by the time he got home, it was dinner time, bedtime type stuff. You know what I mean? Feel that. Weekends, you know, they flew by. I mean, it was never, we, I came from a very loving family. And you know what I mean? I love you, hugs and kisses every night. You know what I mean? It was never, Yeah. it was never nothing. Yeah. But I mean, there was obviously a lot of other struggles that were going on in the household. Um, some stuff that, with all due respect, I'm not going to blast right now. Um, but, uh, it, you know, there was struggles, but, um, overall, you know, I had a very good upbringing, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, you go, Oh, I have anxiety of depression. You know what I mean? It's like, well, okay, well, you know, go, go outside and go play. You know what I mean? Like right. quit, don't sit in the house right. and go, go have fun. Like go, go do something. But, you know, as a kid, you don't really know, you know what I mean? And my parents, they just, you know, blue collar people. You know what I mean? Just making a living and and uh so yeah, no, to answer your question, they're definitely I never remember ever bringing having that conversation at all. So as an adult, have you ever encountered a bully or been bullied? And if so, how did you handle that situation? Because I know you're you're a big guy, so I'm sure like most people probably gonna walk up to you and be like, Hey, I wanna pick on you. But I mean there are yeah. people out there that they can do it even if they're you know in the most subtle way yeah you know i think everybody has people that like mess with them right you know i've had people mess with me you know i mean there's drama everywhere um but uh you know as in like as in a grown man now i mean i'm 37 years old you know i can't think you know in the last 10 years where someone bullied me of the way I used to feel like bullied back in the day to where I feel like, you know, it's going to get, uh, physical, <laughs> but, um, there's drama, you know, people come at you with drama and, you know, if you don't want to jump, you know what I mean? If you don't want to jump on their side, then they want to throw shade at you or something. And, and that's a, that's a way of bullying, right? It's like, Oh, you know, like it's a lot of politics type stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I ain't about politics and right. like that's yeah, no. I'm not gonna yeah. ride with something that I don't believe in and I'm not gonna feel pressured into doing it, regardless of who anyone is. See, I'm I've heard people say, Oh, you are who you hang around and stuff like that. That's for the weak that's for the weak minded. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm a grown man. I hang you know, I mean I'd be around whoever I wanted to. Their actions reflect on them my actions reflect me, you know, and anybody that thinks that someone else's reaction or actions reflect on, on them, on themselves, that's somebody that, in my opinion, 
they, they, they obviously don't have control over who they are as a person. So, but there's been moments where I've seen that or heard, you know, that that may be, and it's like, yeah, and that's a form of, of bullying. You know what I mean? So, but uh, yeah, man, as of recently, now nah, I ain't had nobody try to try to push me around. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hope not, right? For their sake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I would just walk away um, <laughs> or laugh. Yeah, I mean, the, hey, sometimes that works, you know, uh, just laughing at it and they just, you know, they, they turn away and just say, all right, whatever. <laughs> I ain't going to ruin their day because they just, they don't even care. Um, all right. So, yeah, I mean, most, in the most of the time, most people I would like to think that are, they're not after really looking to fight anybody. I think that's probably somebody's like at the bottom of the list is if something happened, would I fight them? <laughs> Um, for the most part, I think that's usually the case. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's cool that you're just so positive. Um, um, your take on everything. Um, and that, that's part of like even like Vanbox, create your own shine. Uh, one of the main reasons I, you know, um, I rock with you, man. It's uh, really what it is, create your own shine. You know, if somebody wants to say something or well, whatever, man, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm being me and creating my own shine. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, you know, not about what anybody else is doing. And like you said, I don't reflect on what I'm doing. That's, that's on them. You know, I'm a grown person. I'm my own person at the end of the day. Um, if I see exactly. something I don't like, I have the power to walk away and that's it and disassociate myself with it. So Absolutely. But, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, you know, the uh, way social media is and, you know, how fast everything moves, you know what I'm saying? Someone says something and it could be spread around the world in, in seconds, right? So um, everyone's got to put on this face for, for who they think people want to see. And that's not what I'm going to do ever because, you know, I think being authentic and to, to who you are is, is the best, you know, I mean, that's the easiest road, right? Um, because, you know, trying to play face for somebody else, man, it's just, I don't know, it's too much stress. And, you know what I mean? And I think that, that can cause probably mental issue and not issues, but like, you know, it can cause you anxiety and stress and you right. know what I mean? It can yeah. cause you, you know, things to maybe depression because you know, you're not being true to yourself. So um, as I've gotten older to, to come back to the mental health stuff, it's gotten a lot easier for me to process stuff and just move right on. You know what I mean? And I know that that's not the case for a lot of people and I respect that. So it's not something that I'm like, Oh, you know, I try not to anyways, be like, oh, well, why can't you, you know? And I know that I'm guilty of, of, you know, not always understanding if someone can't process something and, and then move on the way that I can. And um, I'm trying to work on that, you know what I mean? I'm trying to be a better person in, in that aspect. But I do have this a gift now, I want to call it, of uh, processing and then just shoving it out of my, you know what I mean? And just, okay, well, it is what it is, accepting it. And then just, you know, carrying on. And, um, you know, I think it's a good, <laughs> I feel blessed that I can get, I'm at that point now. And I'm not saying every day, not every day, you know what I mean? So I have right, struggles, right. but um, I think being able to process things and and, and then just carry on is, uh, is something that um, I'm just blessed to, to be able to do now. Yeah, no, I definitely, um, there's a lot of times where I, I can brush it under the rug or if you want to say um, or move past it or not even think about it. Um, but there's also days where that's not the case. Um, you know, so there's good days and bad days. And, um, you know, and sometimes that is the case. I can just move past it and that shred of, po that shred of pos uh, positivity that I'm holding on to um, is sometimes that what gets me through that day. Um, or what mm -hmm. helps me, you know, understand that it's it's okay and it's not really going to happen, <laughs> um, and just be able to move forward from it. But there are days where that just it just plays in your head. It's like on replay. It's like on a loop. It's just going and going, and you can't you just can't shove it out. And those are the days that are hard because as as much as you want to focus on what you're doing, um, it just it's mm -hmm. just back there. So you're still thinking about it, you know, regardless of what you're doing that day. Um, but you, like you said, yeah, it is nice to be able to shut it out sometimes. To be able to push it back and be like, all right, it's cool. It's done. It's over with. Um, and that is sometimes the case. And I think um, a lot of time it just depends on the scenario. 
um, your mindset, um, your levels of stress. Um, that, and that's just how I, th I think what, you know, what helps you be able to push things back and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. but that's really, that is a blessing that you're able to do that. Um, like you said, that isn't the case for a lot of people. Um, and, you know, for the longest time before I was really in tune with myself and my own mental health, I really didn't think that way either. It's like, well, we'll just get past it, move past it, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. you know not being as understanding. Um, and part of that, I think, is just because I myself was maybe not ready to really, really accept the fact that I myself had to work through these things that I really had no idea what they were, uh, you know, or who to turn to or, or what to even think. Did um, I let alone look in the mirror and say, hey, you know, this is me and how do I move past this? Um, mm -hmm. And as, as you grow in your journey, that's something that, that you do learn how to do and it, days do get better. And I think that... Um, like what we're doing right now, talking about it is something that needs to be done more and on a, you know, on for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure that when you, you have kids, so when you get home with your kids, uh, you know, you probably ask your kid, you know, what'd you do at school today? You know, how was your day? You know, ask, you know, did you play with your friends or, you know, asking questions and, you know, interact with them. Um, and I think that's one way of, of us being able to learn, you know, as a kid, learn more how to just express yourself and how you're feeling and, and be able to be like, Hey, I'm comfortable to tell my parent, Hey, you know, this is going on. So I think that's, that's super important. Yeah. Like I said, that's something that you should, I'm sure you do with your kid. Absolutely. Communication is, I think it's, is, it's just huge when being with being a parent, at least for the way <clears throat> I'm trying to parent and my wife, you know, my wife and I um, talking to our, I mean, our kids are little though. Right. So seven, four and two um and but my seven-year-old you know he's he's very he's very intelligent i'm not just saying that because he's my own he but he's definitely understands more than i think the average seven-year-old as far as i think just what life and he, he's he's a very smart kid and uh you know talking to him and communication you know what i mean making sure that he understands that he can come to us you know and but still walking that line of being, you know, the enforcer or whatever, you know what I mean? Putting my foot down, but uh, letting him know, though, you know, that it's, you know, this is obviously for for a reason, but you can always still come to me. You know what I mean? You can always still come to your mother. And um, I think we're, you know, we got a good foundation with that. And that wasn't necessarily the case for me growing up. Um, not that I didn't have you know, good parent. I have amazing parents, but there wasn't that, that communication wasn't there. There was other, you know, um, I mean, everything else was there as far as the love and, you know, but the, the communication just, I feel like that was a piece that as a, as a father now, you know what I mean? You, you want to be a better father than, than your, you know, than your dad or better parent, you know what I mean? Cause you know, I mean, that's ultimately, you know, it's our responsibility to, to try to raise, to raise them to be, you know what I mean? And uh, I think communication is huge. I think it's huge in a lot of aspects. I mean, and just in life in general. So having it with my children and is, is vital, you know, so plus two, I don't want them keeping secrets. You know what I mean? Right. I don't want them feeling like they can't come to me if something is getting, you know what I mean? If something's yeah. happening to them. Yeah especially if it's something really bad, you know what I mean? So, Oh yeah, no, definitely. So, yeah. Cause, uh, there was things that would happen to me growing up that I didn't say nothing to nobody because I was either scared or embarrassed or whatever. So just kept that shit inside and you know what I mean? Uh, it was what it was, I guess. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that just goes back to, you know, different times, <laughs> Um, I feel like now, um, like you said, you're, you're um, definitely trying to be, you know, more have more communication with your kids uh, than you got when you were a kid um, or that you had with your parents. And I think that, like I said, different times, um, uh, you're also, you also get to stay at home with your kids because uh, you work from home. Um, so that's just truly a blessing. Um, you know, your parents were always working, as, you know, like mine, uh, you know, mine were always at work too. And, you know, when it was dinner time, it was usually, you know, finished dinner get into bed dad's coming the dad's walking through the door to have his dinner and then get ready for bed so you know basically you got like the weekends to hang out with them or you know 
Mm-hmm. Hang out, which means chores. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> uh, but not so much, you know, during the week. Um, I was very fortunate that my dad definitely did communicate with us a lot. Uh, a lot of time, he'd always um, sit and talk to us. Um, if he thought that something might have been wrong, um, or if um, we did something that we weren't supposed to, instead of you know, like when we got in trouble, um, he definitely would take the talk to us approach a lot, um, especially first. Um, his thing behind it was, um, you're a human being and you understand, so let's talk about it first. Right. Um, the, you know, let's see what, what happened and why, why did you do this? Um, I'm not saying that, you know, that was always the case. Cause there was times where, you know, there's, you get spanked. I mean, back in the day when we we're kids, you got spanked. Um, so, you know, yeah. <laughs> there was times where you did get spanked. I'm not saying that he always talked to us. I did receive spankings too, as you know, as a child. Um, but I definitely would say the communication um, on his end was definitely there as well as my mom. So, Right. Yeah. And that's all. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm a very analytical person, so I've always thought about it before I even had kids that that was going to be something that I wanted to make sure I did for, for them was communicate. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, I still rule, rule with the iron fist, right? I mean, if I put my, you know what I mean? I'm still, you know, old school a little bit, but, um, you know what I mean? They get, they, they need to understand, like my son, if he does something wrong and it comes to the point to where maybe he, you know, is he's in trouble. Um, he has to explain why, you know what I mean? He needs, I, he needs to tell me. So I understand it's so that way I know he knows what's going on and <clears throat> never had an issue. You know what I mean? And it seems like when he was not saying he was ever bad, but when he was going through his moments, like all, you know, kids do, they have them, whatever. Um, when he was able to tell us what he did wrong, it was like, you know, it felt good because then you knew, that, you know, or you know that he knows and, you know, it was like, okay, well, we, you know what I mean? We can make headway. We can move on. You know what I mean? Right. You definitely feel like you did a, your job as a parent at that point. You, you, you feel good about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause you're like, okay, cool, man. Like, you know what you did wrong. All right. People, you're going to make more mistakes. It's part of life, but you know, let's try not to make that same one. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's all, it's okay. Yeah. But let's just not try to make that same one. So as far as like, um, you know, um, like having anxiety, uh, depression, um, and even being bullied, um, how does that, or has it affected any relationships? Um, or like if your son came to you and said, I'm getting bullied, um, how would that affect the way that you would react to that? Um, well, I don't know if it really affected relationships, um, I don't know. I mean, you know, I guess anything, maybe not, obviously not directly, maybe indirectly, you know what I mean? If you have a bad day or anxiety or depression or something that may have affected in a relationship, you know, maybe more edgy because of it. So, um, but directly it, uh, you know, I mean, I guess some depression and anxiety may have led me to, to maybe venture off and do some recreational activities that might not necessarily been legal, you know what I mean? As far as substances and different things like that. So that it may have uh, affected relationships, I guess, you know what I mean? Like in a right. indirect way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that, I mean, that probably, probably how that worked out. And then um, what was the second part of your question? Sorry. It was, yeah. um... How would that affect your relationship, like with your kid? If he said he was getting bullied, as like, okay, how would yeah, you, yeah. how would you, how would you react to that if your son came to you and said that, or your daughter? Um, I would be like, "Where's their, uh, who's the kid, and where's their parents?" And um, I would go, I would try to go and handle it with the, uh, with the parent. You know, what I mean, I'd bring it up to them, and obviously not like aggressively or nothing, <laughs> but I would. Uh, you know what I mean? Knock, knock, knock. I'm going to beat you up. Yeah, hey, what's up, little? What's up, little homie? Um, no, I would. Uh, well, I mean, I'd you know just try to tell him, you know, like communicate. Just try to tell him, hey, like you know, 
stay away from the person, you know, um, you know what I mean? Don't, but don't let them, you know what I mean? Don't, don't let them harm you, you know? Right. I mean, that obviously if they put hands on you, do whatever you got to do to, to get away from the situation. Um, but, uh, I would, I would try to set up a meeting with the parent or I would try to set up, you know what I mean? I would try to come at it and, or, you know, I'd, uh, depending on what it was going, I mean, maybe I'd kind of let the kids handle it too. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes stepping back and letting him, you know what I mean? It depends. You know, I think it just would depend on the, the situation and how severe. Yeah, no, Cause, uh, I mean, cause I'm not going to be there for him his whole life. So I'm not going to, I'm not one of those parents that's going to bubble wrap my children. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, obviously I'm going to be there. I'll, I would die for them. And you know what I mean? And I want them to be safe, but you know, they, there's going to be little tough times and you know what I mean? I would, I would, you know, luckily I haven't been in that position yet. So, but uh, I've thought about it, you know? So um, I think I just let it play out and see how it went. And if it got to the point to where it needed to, you know, I needed to intervene, and that's when I would step in and, you know what I mean, do whatever uh, with the, I could with the parents and try to get it straightened out. No, no, that's a good approach. Yeah, I don't know if it's the right approach, but, you know, I mean, I think kids need to learn themselves, too, though. You know what I mean? They need to be able to handle a little bit and not uh, feel like they got to run to, to, you know what I mean, to somebody with everything not saying that he can't come to me initially right, right. but you know what i mean i would uh i don't know hopefully that uh doesn't sound too bad but i think it's uh um yeah i think it's i think it's healthy to be able to handle situations you know what i mean and uh it builds uh i i like to think it builds uh, a little bit of leadership skills there because um if you can take a bully and turn them around from that then you know, you're, you're leading. Um, yeah, absolutely. Or, you know, if you can just take it and just not even care, you know what I mean? Right. Some people get, you know, there was things that people would say to me growing up and I just, <laughs> and I was in one ear and out the other. Right. You know, I the verbal stuff isn't so, to me, is nothing. I mean, what someone's opinion is of me is none of my business. Right. Um, yeah, I know that might sound crazy, but words are, are nothing. You know, someone can speak on something and say whatever they want whatever whatever okay well good you know congratulations that's what you're that's what you think i think people are so sensitive and so insecure that they get strapped up in words and this is just my personal opinion now when it comes to threats or physical stuff and then yeah then things should be you know that's when but when it comes to being bullied on on words and stuff i think it uh personally and that might just because i'm I'm an a-hole. Um, I think that uh, sometimes people just, you, you know, just toughen up, you know what I mean? Move on. Like you can't change someone's opinion on you. So don't let it, don't stress on it and and don't let it, you know what I mean? Just move, move past it. And uh, cause that's what else are you going to, you know what I mean? You can't stress and have it affect your life. And, you know, and I, but I also, I, I learned at a young age too, though. You know what I mean? Cause I learned at a young age, like, okay, well, people don't like me for certain reasons, whether it was because I was chubby or whatever the reason may be. Um, but you know what I mean? Maybe it was whatever. So I couldn't change that. You know what I mean? I couldn't change the way they looked at me. So I'm going to stress on it, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, no, it's like uh, my son always says, you know, flex on them haters. And I'm just like, what? He's all flex on them haters, dad. Who cares? <laughs> I'm just like, just stop. <laughs> it, just, it just makes me laugh though. <laughs> cause he's all like, right. yeah, and dad. He's like, you just got to flex on them haters. <laughs> and it's funny cause I guess he was a, uh, somebody had said something to him via like the headset when he played Fortnite. <laughs> and I told him, what'd you always tell me though? He's all what? I'm like, you know, flex on them haters. I said, who cares? It's a video game. Dude. Like, you should worry about it. He was like, flex on them. I was like, song. you got them there fancy go. moves, so do it. And he's like, all right, all right. And he finally, you know, he, it was cool because, you know, I, I kind of just gave him his own words back. And he's like, all right. He started playing again. And, you know, he moved past it. But, um, yeah, you're right. Like, words are just words. Um, that's not nothing really 
dwell on. And if I keep dwelling on, them, I'm just giving them the power that they're looking for. And for what? Yeah. I mean, I mean you even see it out here and you know what I mean? Stuff out here on social media, right? People get, man, they get all kinds of tightened up when <laughs> someone, you know, people start talking and it's like, you're allowing, you know what I mean? You're, you're allowing right. that person right. to affect you regardless of what they say. Yeah, they're robbing you of your happiness, and that's something that you should never allow yeah. anybody to do. So. Someone can speak my name a hundred, you know, a thousand million times. What I mean, you're, you know what I mean? That yeah, I'm on your mind, you know? So right. I, you know, I don't even, you know what I mean? You're not even on my radar, like, at all. So, you know, I'm happy for you. You know what I mean? Keep, you know, keep doing, keep doing your thing, buddy. You know what I'm saying? Keep, keep, keep it going, man. I'm over here doing my thing and you're watching me. So, <laughs> you know, um, I think a lot of people get pride, you know what I'm saying? Pride is a big thing and, uh, they get it, they get caught up in it. And, um, but drama, drama's fun too, though, right? People may not want to, to admit it, but people like it. You know, I like, I like drama. You know, I mean, not saying I want to be involved in it, but I don't mind <laughs> sitting back and eating some popcorn. Right, say, some popcorn. <laughs> yeah, I'm like Michael Jackson in this bee, just just all wide eyed, like what's going on, you know. But uh, unfortunately for people in the drama, you know, I mean, they they obviously haven't learned the lesson of, you know, you can't change someone's opinion of you. It's really even none, none of your business, you know. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's nobody's business, you know, what my opinion is of them because it's mine. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of how I look at it. No, I, I mean, I had posted something earlier. <laughs> um, you know, number one, it, um, you know, what matters how you look at yourself. And number two, are you happy with who's looking back at you in that mirror? Yeah, I, see, I, I reposted that. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's all that should matter to you. You know, for anybody out there that's struggling with, you know, self-esteem and self-image, Become happy with who's looking at you in the mirror. Yeah. Um, don't try to please anybody out there um, because it's not going to bring you anything. It's going to bring you more depression and more anxiety. Um, and a lot of times just turn you into a jerk that you probably don't want to be. Mm -hmm. So just continue being you, create your own shine. You know what I'm saying? Go to get out there and just live your life. Um, you know, ignore the haters. They're going to fade away. They always do. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, just with bullying, if you if it's nothing physical, then just ignore it and move past it. And at some point, a lot of times you you grow up, you get out of school because usually it's you know kids in school that do it. And at some point in your adulthood, they'll probably come at you and say, "Hey, I'm sorry, I was a jerk to you." Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right. Or if they don't, then <laughs> most likely they're not even somebody that's going to ever matter to you in your life, anyways. Right. I mean, let's be honest with the exception of some people, I guess, a lot, you know, some people have them childhood friends that they have forever. Um, you know, I'm, I, it wasn't a situation for me. Uh, most of my closest friends, um, they're all dead. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I mean, the people that I went to school with that I thought were, you know what I mean? I mean, not that I have any hatred towards anybody, but you know, I mean, I see them on Facebook or, or something like that. And, or if I seen them out in the, you know, seen them at the store, you know, it'd be cool to catch up or whatever. But I mean, I, you know what I mean? So especially the people that might've hated on me or didn't like me or thought I was fucking, thought I was fat, Oop, almost slipped up there. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, thought I was, uh, you know, whatever their opinion was of me. Um, I mean, even if they apologize today, I mean, I'd they cool, whatever, but it wouldn't really bring any any real reaction or emotion. I'll just like, oh, well, I mean, you know, good job, you, you know, you grew up. You know what I mean? I'm happy for you. And I, I don't have any grudges towards anybody. Right. You know I mean, people might have grudges towards me. I mean, I wasn't always the best of a person. I wasn't always the best of a friend. I mean, I wasn't. You know what I mean? There was times where I was a not a good person and you know and that actually gives me anxiety and, and stress too sometimes you know what I mean looking back on some things that I've done wrong and you know just try not to ever do them again you know I've, I've wronged people 
you know, people have left my life because of the way that I was. And, you know, I mean, that, that definitely is, you know, not, not, it's not something I hold on to, but it's definitely that has brought in, brought in uh, stress or anxiety into my life thinking about it. I that was going to be one of my questions is do you often think about, you know, um, those people that bullied you or, or times in your life that you let um, stress, anxiety, or depression uh, get the best of you. So, um, you, like I said, you just kind of answered that one. So, um, right on. <laughs> um, now you said, uh, cause being an entrepreneur, um, you know, doing your thing, um, which you do very well for everyone out there. Um, top top you. shelf product so um i appreciate that yeah for sure man um how does mental health affect that part of your life your work life like the anxiety part of it uh well just the, the desire to want to be you know to succeed to the level that i feel is success um it gives me anxiety um you know but it also gives me a good side to mental health too though it gives me the you know what I mean? Like, I don't think mental health, I, I think um, people hear the word and then they, they automatically always associate it with something bad. So um, I, I kind of look at it from the other other side. So it, it kind of like my, you be having good mental health, you know what I'm saying? All right. the, right. all the amazing things that the, you know, having this kind of lifestyle um, brings is, is what I try to focus on. I mean, obviously there's going to be stress and, you know what I mean? There's going to be days where you question everything, you know, and, um, and then there's days of super, you know, you're super high. Um, and, but just trying to find a balance and just, you know, slide through every day and know that, you know what I mean? I'm going to get what I put in. So, um, if I'm stressing because I'm not doing enough, then that's my own fault. Right. If I'm doing, not, you know, everything I can and things still aren't going, you know, the way I, I was hoping, you know, that's when things get a little more messy inside your head. But, uh, you know, you sign up for it. And, um, you know, I, I want to live by my sword and die by my sword. So, I mean, with the exception of having my amazing and beautiful, successful wife having my back. <laughs> She's got my six, so... Um, without go. her, you know, it, things would be a lot more crazy, but definitely blessed to have the woman that I have. So, um, she's allows me to, to make my dreams, you know, be possible. So, um, that takes a big load off, of, off of my stress. Um, but yeah, man, the, to me, um, it, it's, it's a way more, there's way more positives as far as the mental health side, you know? So I even like on my website, you know, I got you tag, you know, you're on the front page where right? one of the slides and it says that uh, we strive for beard health, you know, mental health and um, what some one other something else. And uh, because it's to be health, you know, to be healthy mentally, you know what I mean? That's what that's what I want. And that's what I want people around me to, to be, you know, um, so. That's what we're trying to do, right? Trying to Definitely. push forward and, you know what I mean? Just be be authentic. And I think, uh, I don't know, man, I think it's doing a good job. I know you're doing a good job, bro, promoting, bringing awareness. You know what I mean? I appreciate it. Got nothing but respect yeah. for what you're doing. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, no, uh, I think, like, uh, the creative side of, 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 the, uh, of your job, I think, is uh, probably a big plus for you. Um, as far as like mental health and having a a healthy a healthy outlet to to create, um, mm -hmm. I think it's it's a, is important. Um, you know, a lot of people you know they don't have a, a healthy outlet uh, that'll allow them to to just zone everything out and just do you know just do their thing. Um, when you're creating a scent, uh, I imagine that's something that you probably do. You kind of just zone out and just kind of start getting into your creative process of making something and. And putting things together um and that's probably like a good way to yeah you know, kind of like when somebody sits and meditates or someone goes out and does yoga um tent creating for you would you just say it's probably 
about something like that. Can you say that again? I think we kind of was chopping up there a little bit. Uh, when you're creating a scent, um, the creative yeah. process that's involved, it's kind of like, you know, somebody does meditation or yoga, mm -hmm. um, the, the healthy outlet part of it. Would you mm -hmm. agree that's something that, that is helpful yeah, okay. to you? Yeah, no, definitely, dude. I love, yeah, creating and, you know, um, that side of it is, it's awesome, dude. You know, the designing, and, you know, just thinking of it and the process, you know what I mean? I love the process of building something, you know what I mean? I love the process of creating and, you know, innovating and, you know, coming up with, you know what I mean? The, whatever it may be, the theme, the, the, the scent, like you said, um, the, the design of the label, um, the, the process is to me is, is it's amazing. You know what I mean? That's, that's, I love that part of it. You know what I mean? It's the down in the trenches part, you know what I mean? Is where I think the, the bit, you know, success is. So um, while loving the design part, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's such a uh, important part. Um, so yeah, it definitely is a, it's definitely a, a light, you know what I mean? It's definitely a, a way out, you know, mentally to, you know what I mean? Especially when stuff comes together as far as sense, you know, you're like, sweet, that came together real nice, you know? And then <clears throat> it, uh, it makes it all worth the while when, you know, the consumer gets it and they're like, wow, I love that. Or like, when you come, when you come back out with this scent, you know what I mean? Like I got a scent that's soon to be released, Munchies. A lot of people love it. You know, they hit my DMs daily. When's this dropping? When's it dropping? You know, and stuff like that is it's nice to know, you know, that people really appreciate it. You know what I mean? And they want it. So it's a, uh, yeah, man, it's a good part of it. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Right on. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's definitely something that, um, I think uh, also helps you uh, push and strive for, um, you know, the success that you're looking for. Um, and like I've told you, man, I, I don't have a doubt in my mind that you'll reach that success. Um, <clears throat> just, um, just the way that you've taken something that you love to do and have, have made it, uh, you know, into something that you can do every day. Um, that's a huge success. Um, you know, and that's, that's awesome. And um, everybody out there, don't be sleeping on that hell bit. Things so that's the, the <laughs> to me is like, Oh man, it's fire. And uh, hopefully soon we can find out how to make an air freshener out of that. <laughs> yeah. That's shame, shameless plug right there. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, uh, um, has anybody ever like um, in your life um, helped you overcome your, um, your struggles or, or, or how did you, uh, cause I know you said a lot of time you were able to just kind of push it away and be like, oh, it's cool. Um, so that's like one way of overcoming it. Right. Um, has there any, but, you know, but within that duration, has anybody helped you when, or did you ever feel there was a time where you may have needed help and then somebody was able to help you? Um, well, I mean, like, even as, you know, I mean, I've been with my wife now 10 years. Um, so, you know, in the past 10 years, she's definitely, you know I mean? She's helped me out with, she's seen me at some pretty low spots when we first got together. Um, I was, I was pretty wild, uh, 10, 11 years ago in my, in my early twenties, mid twenties and, um, being wild and like that comes with, uh, you know what I mean? There's a lot of, there's a lot of ups and there's a lot of downs. Um, so when the downs are bad, she seen them and, uh, I'm, I'm blessed that she, she never judged me for things that I was going through. Um, and she was always there, you know what I'm saying? And she, she I mean, so, you know, I don't want to sound say that whole cliche thing, you know, oh, well, you know, she saved my life and all that. Honestly, I, I, I truly believe had she not come into my life, um, I, I'd probably be either dead or, or in prison. And that, that's 100% without a doubt in my mind because that's where I was going and um coming out of that coming out of that lifestyle coming out of that craziness um you know what I mean depression anxiety I was on Selexa um <clears throat> and uh when I was coming off of all the medicine you know because it wasn't really working 
It was making me have worse thoughts. Um, There's a lot of side effects coming off of it. You know what I mean? Roller coasters, all kinds of stuff. And bro, she she rode with me the whole time. She never swayed course. She never judged me. She never. She always had my back. She, you know what I mean. So, and it wasn't like she was. And it was yeah. So I mean, my wife has been huge, huge play. You know, and I don't know if she realizes it. Um, but yeah, I mean. And, you know, my sisters, they were there from, you know, through some stuff or whatever. Um, but nothing like what my wife has, you know, been able to help in the beginning, in the, in the early years of our relationship, first couple of years. And then we started having kids and, a lot, you know, I mean, I'm sure you can agree. Once you have a kid, man, a lot of things change, yeah. you know. Definitely. So. <laughs> like, you kind of... Uh... They tend to make you calm down. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I was, I was living a fast life, dude, and um, it was going, it was going down pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, once you do have kids, man, it's um, it's a human being, dude, that can't defend himself, and it's, it's depending on you to, to be, be there for it and do all that for it, and it's definitely like life changing. Like, you know, all my buddies, not all, but I mean, a lot of the buddies that I used to run with, the best man at my wedding, um. You know, what I mean, he was he was still living that fast life. And, uh, you know, he unfortunately he you know, he passed away um, in 2018. So, um, <clears throat> you know, what I mean, people just one of my best, best buddies growing up. Uh, we were friends all the way up until I was, you know, uh, an adult. And he he's gone now, you know, Um it's just crazy to think because, you know, I used to run with them guys every day for years, every day, hanging out every day. Work, I used to go, you know, we, we'd even work together, you know, and then I got buddies that, you know, they in and out of prison. I mean, and it might sound bad and I don't want people to get the wrong idea like I was some kind of criminal or nothing because it wasn't nothing like that. But it was, um, you know what I mean? It's a certain lifestyle you live and, you know, I, I'm just lucky that I got out of it you know, before anything happened, really. So, I mean, super blessed to to be where I am today. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, shout out to your wife, man. Um, definitely, Thanks, man. definitely awesome that she uh, whipped you back into shape. <laughs> yeah, she used to beat me. No. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I mean, like the statement, you know, behind a strong man is a strong woman. I'm, you know, that's... Uh, like you said, I'm not trying to be cliche, but, um, you know, you, you definitely have that. And that's, that's awesome that, that you were able to find that. Um, yeah. You know, so thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> yeah. You got to meet her. She, you know, she don't put up with no BS. Right. <laughs> she put her foot down quick. <laughs> I said no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I myself been fortunate to, um, just days where you just don't, you just don't want to, you know, go on. You just want to give up. Um, she's always there to be like, Hey, you know, are you okay? Um, you know, what's going on? You know, talk to me. Like, you know, what can we do to solve it? Like, what can we do to, to make it better? Um, you know, whether it's just stay home and, you know, we can just talk and, you know, go out and do something, just, you know, us and, you know, kind of figure out, you know, what, what we can do going forward to, to make things a little easier and better because um, mm-hmm. uh, that meds just make you feel nasty <laughs> um you know growing up there's no specific medicine for Tourette, so they just give you you know concoction of things or you know some other sort of medication and they just make you feel horrible um which is why i ended up just never taking them again <laughs> uh, yeah i can only imagine <laughs> You know, you, you don't remember what you did during the day and just a bunch of side effects and you're just a zombie. Basically, you're just on autopilot, man. The lights are on, but nobody's really home. Um, so, yeah, definitely I can agree. This meds is just not for everybody. Um, you know, it's definitely not for everybody. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I've chosen not to. Um, when I did get really depressed, I did um, I did start taking medication again and uh, – months after i just stopped i just couldn't do anymore it just it wasn't yeah I didn't feel like no i totally agree dude i couldn't 
<laughs> I was, uh, they had me on some stuff for, for depression, anxiety, and bro, the, the side effects, the, the thoughts, man, that they were way worse than just dealing with whatever I was, had going on. Because really what I had going on was all self-inflicted, man. You know what I'm saying? It was all, it was all this self-inflicted action. So, um, had I not been acting like a knucklehead, I wouldn't have been stressing and tripping out. You know what I mean? Right. Depressed with, you know what I mean? The way my life was going. But um, even with the way that stuff all played out, man, I'm, dude, I'm so grateful that it happened to me because it turned me into a person that, you know, I, I appreciate so much in life now. You know what I mean? And, um, had I not gone through some of that, I don't know if I'd appreciate it or look at life the way that I do, you know, um, I, I really do, man. It, it, I'm, I, I'm, I'm glad that I went through a lot of that stuff, dude. I, mean, I really am because I generally do, you know, ha have appreciation for, for everything that, you know what I mean? I don't get me wrong. I want, there's other things that I want, you know what I mean? I have, dr I have dreams and goals and, but for what I have now compared to the things that I had before, you know, I mean, it's, um, man, you know, I, I, I'm just blessed, dude. <laughs> you know, I don't even know how, how I got here. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good thing to, to sometimes have those moments in life where you're, you know what I mean? It makes you appreciate, like we said earlier, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the having those, trials and tribulations, you know, it allows you to appreciate it later on. And um, whether I was a kid or an adult, you know what I mean? And I'm sure it'll, maybe it'll in 15, 20 years, you know, I'll look back on Bandbox and, you know, learn something from it and, you know, running another multi-million dollar company, you know what I mean? And whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like there's right. everything's happening right. for a certain reason. And, um, and I'm just happy to be along with the process, dude. Yeah, no, uh, definitely. Um, so, was um, I mean, was there ever a time that you felt that you were going to give up prior to the medication? Because you said the medication has made it made it more. So, that's that's thoughts and stuff. But was there like a time where you like were almost for sure like you were just uh, taking yeah, a, an honest. exit? Yeah, that quick fix and just close everything out. I, I think, uh, you know, we all, well, I can't say we all, but I, uh, I definitely have had that, you know what I mean? There is a moment where I, I had nothing, dude. You know what I'm saying? I had nothing. I, I didn't, I didn't have, I mean, I was homeless and, you know, um, I mean, the only thing I had was a job. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was, there was times, you know, like stuff like that where you're like, man, well, what am I even doing? You know, um, but there's a, something inside you say, well, that's not today, son. Not today. Let's we'll get through today. And, you know, and, you know, it, you know, here we are, man. I, I, uh, I'm just glad that that moments were few and, you know, cause some people don't, uh, you know I mean? They're not so lucky. You know what I mean? They, they go play Russian roulette and well, yeah. <clears throat> Unfortunately. Yeah, that's um, that's definitely something that's very big that um a lot of people also don't talk about um is um you know having those thoughts or, or how they handle it or deal with it, um, which is all part of mental health, um, which is just sad, um, you know when people decide to just fully give up and just close up shop like that, and it's something that it hurts everybody around them that, that loves them um, cause they leave behind everybody um, wondering so much and so much unanswered, um, which is why it's important for people to talk about how they're feeling and their struggle. And, and if you're not feeling okay, it's, it's, it's not wrong to go out and get some help. It's not, a, it's not wrong right, to absolutely. say, Hey, <laughs> Um, you know, I'm feeling some type of way right now and I don't know how to handle it. Can you help me? You right, know, absolutely. It's just simple of sitting with somebody, just listening. You don't even have to say anything. Don't even talk. Just sit there and just let them talk. Um, that alone can help them, even if it's through that day or that night, until they can find, you know, 
to the help that they're looking for. Um, but there's just so much like stigma behind that we just shouldn't talk about anything and just move past it and uh, hold it in or whatever the case may be. And it's con it's contributing to that number. And I think the sooner that people understand that it's okay or like, you know, like I tell my kids all the time, uh, you know, you can always talk to me about anything. Uh, you know, if you're getting bullied in school, um, and I don't like, I got two little ones, but my older one's 13, about to be 14. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's getting to that time where, you know, she's going to be experiencing high school life, high school pressures, right. uh, making right. friends, losing friends. Um, and, you know, she always comes to us with anything that, you know, maybe happening, whether somebody was trying to bully her or whatever, um, so she's definitely, you know, always has always come to us and I, and, and, and we like that. Um, and we always tell her that don't, don't ever think that you can't come to us for anything. If you're feeling something or if something happened, um, you know, you need to just tell us so we can all find a solution together. There's no shame in asking for help. If you need the help. Um, right. and I'm just really Absolutely. good on that um, because there's no way somebody should ever feel scared or ashamed or feel guilt. Um, because they're asking for help and there's no shame in that. Um, yeah. You know, and when I, when I talk about my mental health, you know, a lot of people maybe may look at it and be like, Oh, well, there, there's, there's may be a lot worse. Right? They're not able to, to, to process it and move on like I can. So, um, or then, you know, people that maybe look at what I got going on and think it's, they may feel bad for the things that, you know, have happened to me or whatever, you know, or whatever I've done or, you know what I mean? Whether it's self-inflicted or, or not. And I, um, but, you know, I've never really been one to reach out for help. You know what I mean? And it's not that, I don't think it would, could help because I, I think that if you're having, especially if you're having any kind of thoughts that, you know what I mean? Definitely get it, get that out there and get it known. Um, but but I'm, I'm definitely a believer in, in, in getting stuff off of your chest. You know what I mean? And no, yeah, definitely. even if it's through, uh, you know, even if it's through some kind of physical activity, you know what I mean? You know, like whatever, take up boxing or, or lifting weights or running or, or whatever, maybe some quality time alone with the, the misses, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, I think there's ways to get, you know, people having stress and, you know what I mean? You can, you can get it out and talking is one of them. I mean, getting, just being able to get something that you're holding in off your chest and, you know, maybe, it, maybe you don't feel good right afterwards. Hell, maybe you even feel worse, but maybe, you know, the next morning you wake up and feel a little bit better and not even realize it. You know what I'm saying? And right. that's, I think that's, I've been in the positions where I got something off my chest and maybe I wasn't freaking out in tears about it. And then it didn't, I didn't feel any better. I felt worse at the moment for even talking about it. But then later on, you know, you're like, okay, well, I was able to get that out. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, it's always good to, to try to get it off your chest if you can. And if, um, uh, and if you can't, maybe you need to try something physical, you know, try and work that energy out somehow. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, like, you know, you can go to the gym and, I don't know, some dates aren't the greatest there, <laughs> you know, but then there's days that you have just a really good session and you feel good. Um, you know, afterwards you feel like um, you feel like you left whatever was bugging you there. You know, right. um, which could be the case if you do, like you said, boxing or, you know, maybe some sort of martial arts. Um, I, I promise that you probably feel like you left all that out on the mats out there. Right. Um, you know, sometimes um, when I used to live in Michigan and I'd have a I had a bit of a drive home from work. Um, no matter what kind of day I had at work, um, that drive home you know, 45 minute hour, whatever. It gave me a time, blast my music, you know, had the windows down, you know, smoke, yeah. smoke a cigarette, 
smoke, you know, another cigarette. Um, and uh, just kind of decompress and you know what I mean? That so even days like you know, it was that was kind of you know, being alone sometimes, being able to just you know, sometimes that that that's important too, you know what I mean? I think, um, I think the biggest thing with with mental health, whether it's something you're struggling with or you know, it's a positive thing, is just being mindful of what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's something that a lot of people should know is, and understand is, you know, how are you feeling? You know what I'm saying? Right. Not just letting it happen and being mindful of it. And uh, I think that it'll, that's a, a huge step in, in, you know, just struggles. And uh, I think it's a huge um, process of, of actually being, um, in a, in a good state of mind too, you know what I mean? Understanding your emotions. <clears throat> yeah, um, getting to know yourself, um, that self-love, uh, self-acceptance <laughs> um, aspect. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, cruising is, is something that, that's always been something I like to do. Um, summertime in AC, I mean, it's nice at night, it's still, you know, it's, it's warm, but it's not hot. <laughs> you can definitely roll the windows down um, and, and, you know, enjoy the, the you know, the nice air. Um, you know, it's not cold and it's not hot. So it's just, you know, just a good time. Um, I would say those times kind of got me through college a little bit, um, being able to just do that in the middle of the night. Can't sleep, don't feel good. Um, you know, <laughs> nobody's awake anyways. Um, what should I, you know, what should I do? I, you know, so what am I going to do? Jump in the car listen to some tunes like you said smoke a cigarette smoke another cigarette uh, you know and then come back and call it a night and you know, Absolutely. wake up and do it again the next day and I say um I think like you know that definitely helped me um through some times that I had where I just was just like I just felt lonely but I didn't know how to embrace the loneliness um so like through the power of like music um you know cruising um I learned to accept that the lonely times are sometimes the good times because it lets you think. Um, it, it was, you know what I'm saying? It lets you find yourself. Um, and uh, you're right. Sometimes the lonely times are something that we just need to embrace and understand that it's not bad to be alone. Um, sometimes you do need to be Absolutely. alone. Um, yeah, I think sometimes people want, people think that they need somebody. You know what I mean? I think sometimes that that having people in your life can be more toxic than you know what I mean? Having, you know, that, that, you know, that time by yourself or even people in your life, maybe even be toxic for you and maybe bringing you down. You know, right. I think with social media and the fast life that people we live in today with technology, um, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't cause more depression and suicides and, you know what I'm saying? And mental struggles than, uh, you know, without it. You know, wanting to keep up with the Joneses, wanting to make sure you look fresh, wanting to make sure you got, you know, what I mean, everyone thinks that you're on vacation and you you got the, you know, what I'm saying you got the 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 new new, you know, the new technology, the new phone, right. you know, what I mean, whatever it is, and uh, I think you know that, that's all. I think that you know a lot of it's fake, so it causes people to be more probably depressed, right? Yeah, no, and, definitely. Uh, yeah, seriously, dude. I think social media, as much as I, I enjoy it, and, you know, for the businesses and just different things, it's, you know, I mean, communication is great, but I think for a lot of people out there, you know, particularly young, the younger generations, you know, I mean, they're putting on this fake persona of, you know, what they think is people else, you know, what, what, what other people want to see deep down inside, they're probably miserable. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, like when you went to um, <laughs> when you went to um, out to the woods to your property, no social media. I mean, you made the video, yeah, but I'm sure you had put the phone down and just left it alone. Oh yeah, um, dude, I feels I'm, good, right? Oh, bro, it's it's meditative, <laughs> right? It's like, um, dude, it's just yeah, it's peaceful. You know what I mean? Being in being with nature. Um, not having, 
you know what I mean? Worrying about anything, just kind of just taking life in and, you know what I mean? That, that's, that's the little things like that, bro. Cause then you like, then you have more communication with the people that really matter. I'm not saying like, obviously, you know, like talking to you, you know, matter, but I'm saying like being out there in the woods with my wife and my kids, you know, them little jokes and the little things that we do, you know, are, you know, I think, you know, they're, they're precious. Right. So, and they're, they're really the things that should matter. You know, they, at least they're the things that matter the most to me hearing my kids laugh or my wife laugh or just talking to my wife about nothing, but everything all at once as we're walking down a trail, you know what I mean? And then it's, uh, Bro, it's to me that's that's happiness. You know what I'm saying? It ain't right. sitting in front of a camera flashing off how cool I am and how happy my life is. You know what I mean? That's it's just to me it it can be part. You know that can bring happiness, but uh, to me, true happiness is when there's no cameras on and you know what I mean. The the inside jokes that I have with my wife or yeah inside jokes I have on my kid you know and I don't know man I, that as I'm as I'm got as I've gotten older dude that's what I've I've realized dude um the things that are really most important you know are, are right in front of me and you know what I mean it's my kids and my my family right on right on that's that's, that's good it's deep um so I'm sure you definitely feel like you're in a better place now. You've said that you, you know, a few times now that you're definitely blessed. Um, so um, that's that's definitely good to hear. Um, and how that like uh, you know, as a person that was bullied, <laughs> um, you know, has fought depression, anxiety, um, through childhood. Um, you know, didn't really tell anybody. Um, how do you feel today as somebody who's overcome so much? Somebody who's a dad. A husband, an entrepreneur. Um, how does that make you feel? Um, what knowing that I was, I went through some stuff. Yeah. Um. You know, honestly, I mean that that was. I mean, I don't really think about it that much. Like it's not part of my life now. I mean, I think a lot of it's made me to to who I am, having more, you know, the, the edge that I have, um, the, the no BS kind of stuff that I can put off, you know what I mean? Cause I don't, I don't really put up a lot of crap, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm not so, but, uh, you know, looking back on it, man, like I said, I think, I, I mean, I kind of mentioned it earlier, dude. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm happy I went through it, you know, I'm happy I survived, you know what I mean? The, the darkest of the days, you know what I mean? Them days where, maybe uh, you know shouldn't have woke up that next morning you know what I mean and um because you know honestly without those days and I truly feel that I don't think I'd be as grateful as I am today because I wasn't grateful then you know what I'm saying right now I'm I mean I everything ain't rainbows and sunshines you know but (laughs) It's damn near close, buddy. <laughs> I mean, it's getting there. <laughs> At least Hashtag for me. Team real. Hashtag team real. You know, <laughs> oh man, you know. But I, uh, I mean, I'm still a little wild though, dude. You know what I mean? No, no missionary position, dude, over here. <laughs> I, uh, I um, still got, you know, I still got some years left in me, man. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna change who you know completely, um, but you know it's within reason now. Right on, you know, right on. More responsible. So, what advice would you have for for others who are struggling with mental health, especially like our younger generation? Well, depending on what you're going through, man, you know, don't be scared to talk about it. Don't be scared to, you know, what I mean, to to reach out for help if you, if you need to, if you feel like it's getting out of control, if it's something that you don't feel like you control can uh, control. If it's something to where you're starting to get suicidal thoughts, definitely. I mean, because that's not there's that's not an answer. I mean, that's not even shouldn't even be um, nowhere near close to an answer. Um, and uh, and also, depend you know, 
depending on what it is, um, it's going you're going to see a better day. You know, the, there's going to be, there's going to be days that are, are bad. There's going to be days that are good and just push through the bad days and, you know what I mean? Live in the good days. I mean, that's, you know, but don't be scared to get help. You know, don't be scared to, to try to change too. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of people may be scared to, 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 to go through the process of change and, you know what I mean? Whether it's doing what a counselor says or, or even being on medication, you know? Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. It's to me, um, you know, what, if I could, if I could talk to myself, you know, like I would probably have told myself like, Hey, listen, you know, when I was 14 or whatever, getting, going through some stuff, I'd been like, Hey, listen, right now it sucks. All right. But you're young. You don't fully understand the world yet. You really don't understand the things that are actually important. So the things that are, you're stressing about really aren't that important. Your friends, they're not important. You know, that, that's not really what's important. What's important is how you conduct yourself in life and how, you know what I mean? That having integrity, having, being responsible, you know, having character, that's what's important. All the other stuff, it's causing you problems. And um, I think if, had I been able to see myself and give myself a few words wow. like that, a lot of things would have been different, but then again, though, maybe I wouldn't appreciate what I have now. So, but, uh, yeah, man, I think that's probably what I could I would try to tell the generations, you know what I mean? It's not that, I guess, again, it's situational depending, I mean, kids getting, getting beat and going through any kind of like torture at home or at school, you know what I mean? It depends on how bad it is, but there's always going to be a brighter day. Definitely. Definitely. No, it's not. It's good, man. I like that. Um, you know, definitely uh, encourage everybody out there to go out there and create their own shine, you know. Um, there's going to be bad days. There's going to be good days. Uh, but the good days are good because of those bad days. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, let's, let's you know you made it through something. Um, what do you hope to accomplish in your lifetime? Oh, man. Um, like, I guess that's kind of a loaded question. Um <laughs> I, you know, I mean, like, obviously, I want to be successful. I want my kids to be happy. I want, you know, my marriage to, you know, to be the best it can be. I want health. Um, you know, I want longevity. I want quality of life. So, I mean, overall, though, I, I just, I just want to be happy. You know, that's what I. That's ultimately the, you know, I think happiness over everything, man. So, uh, it's kind of where I'm at right now on the stage. You know what I mean? I could just say, yeah. hey, I, go, I want to accomplish and be, you know, a millionaire, a billionaire. I want to own, you know, all this. Yeah, obviously, you know, who doesn't want to be rich and not necessarily famous, but rich and successful and have no financial worries. But, um, you know what I mean? If I wasn't happy, I don't, you know, I've been, I've been well off, not rich but i've been where i was like dang man you know i could pretty much buy anything i want right now and uh <clears throat> you know but i wasn't necessarily happy you know what i mean so not that i'm broke today but um you know i'm a lot more happier than than i was back when i was making a lot more money yeah so um you know that's really what I ultimately has for me is just about being happy and I think indirectly watching my kids to grow up to be successful and happy, you know, is going to make me happy, you know, having a successful marriage, you know, happy marriage, you know, a good marriage, that's going to make me happy. You know what I mean? So a combination of everything, but, um, you know, and even just knowing that I'm a good person, man, that I've changed, you know, cause like I said, I wasn't the greatest of a person that that's also success to me too, you know? Right. So, yeah, no, I mean, I've always said, you know, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of like you said, you know, create your own shine. It was like, um, you know, 
be, be, you know, be being a success or, or owning success isn't about big things. It could be something small. Um, getting out of bed for some people, um, that's a success. Um, mm -hmm. Taking my kids to the store and not having a panic attack, to me, that's a success. Yes. Um, you know, um, success comes in all shapes and forms and sizes. Um, um, but you know, you gotta, you gotta, um, you know, em embrace your, your success for as small as it can be. Um, you designate that. Um, you can always be a big success if you choose to be, um, even on a small scale. Mm -hmm. And to, I mean, to me, maybe a small scale to somebody else, maybe a big scale. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, <laughs> you know, rolling to a parking lot and I instantly feel like crying. I know that there's no reason why I, I should feel like crying, but I can't help it just how I feel. <laughs> and instead of going, <laughs> turning around, going home, you know, uh, no, we, we're going to go inside. We're going to eat. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> that that's a big success to me. You know what I'm saying? Um so, you know, own, own your, own your levels of success, you know, um, that's, right, that's absolutely. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just. Absolutely. That's the thing. Like everyone's, everyone struggles different, you know, everyone's life's different. The things that you've experienced there, I'll never probably experience, right. Some of the things that I've experienced, you'll probably never experience. So for any, you know, for me to sit here and to, to even think that I could come close. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but to, to emotionally, to be able to, to go through something like that, to, you know, because of whatever, you know, thing that I got going on, you know, I'll never know, you know, I, I will never have, I mean, I don't think I would ever have threats. I don't know if it's something I could ever get, you know, but I, I don't know. You know what I mean? I could never experience what you're, at least that up to today. I don't, you know, right. never right. experienced it. So to hear, you know, stuff like that, like I'm happy for, for you know what I mean? Like, I'm happy for you on any level of Thank you. A success. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, yeah. to me, that's stuff that I take for granted. You know what I mean? Like, but I do have weird things. Like I got to, when I go to a restaurant, you know, I got to, I don't like to sit with my back to the door. I don't know why. I just don't like to be, I don't like the unknown, you know, behind me. I'd, I'd rather have the crowd to my face. Right. You know, um, so, yeah, I mean, I know it's kind of like off left field, but uh, it just made me think of it when you said, you know, going into a restaurant or something. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. have to look for the, uh, you know, th that corner, even though I don't like being in a corner. But in that corner, I can see everybody and what they're doing. But you, I also got to make sure that I know where the nearest exit is in case that front door is blocked. Right on. You know, that's... <laughs> you know, always looking for exits and, just, you know, just in case something happens and it's just crazy because something's not always going to happen. Um, and your mind though, you know, gets the best of you sometimes. Right. Um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I get it, dude. I, I totally get it. I, uh, yeah, I, I get, it. I noticed there's been times where, you know, I go out to eat with, you know, family or, or friends or something. And they get to the table first and they sit in the chair to where now I'm, staring at a wall you know what i mean it's like oh and man then, and everyone in the restaurants behind me and it's just like you know that that initial step up to the chair you know i'm like frustrated you know I, I would be like that's what i always like when i would have any kind of depression or or anything like that i always switched it to anger you know what i mean it was never really about sadness it was, or if, or if it was, it went from sadness to anger quick. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. there was no, you know, idling in, in the sadness zone. It was like, oh, sad, boom, angry. You know what I mean? And not like I was angry where I'd freak out, but just, you know what I'm saying? Like internally, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm just irritated, you know? And uh, it's crazy how that works, man. You know what I mean? It's crazy how your mind can do those little tricks to you. And, but like I mentioned before, man, being mindful of it and just understanding, you know what I mean? And kind of just process through it and move on. You know, I know I haven't gone into a lot of details on stuff that happened. It's more or less just, um, I don't know, man. Some of it was, you know, 
a lot of it was embarrassing too you know what i mean so it's not right. stuff that it's hard to even put out sometimes but um you know there's reasons why i'll have anxiety you know what i mean there's reasons why i feel certain kind of ways you know what i mean having my back you know what i'm saying um yeah no definitely so right on no i know like um you know uh, everybody has a hobby but <laughs> Whether you know, or I like to think that at least many people have hobbies. <laughs> um, what are some of the hobbies that you have, and uh, if any of them have helped you through through any struggle? Uh, you said that at, you used to cruise on the way home, um, so that's one way. But do you have any other any other ways that you alleviated? Um, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I my life's fat, really, really crazy, right? I mean, get up early um you know the kids are there always they're just like you know they just never go away no i'm just kidding <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, always just, right. they're just always there man no um you know working from home uh you know the kids are always there so um i don't really have uh, i mean being out in the woods you know is is like I said, like a hobby of mine, cutting, you know, cutting up trees. And I know it sounds weird, but, um, you know, I don't know, man. It seems like anymore life revolves around work and kids, you know, or my business and kids and my wife. So, but, you know, uh, working out, um, stuff like that, you know, try to, that's, I enjoy that, um, boxing. But I, you know, um, wish there was more time, you know what I mean, to, to do stuff. It feels like uh, life gets in a routine sometimes, you know what I mean? So as of this moment that, you know, as we're talking, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of hobbies with the exception of the beard stuff, you know what I mean, yeah. and family. But yeah. that doesn't mean that I'm not happy, you know what I'm saying? It's just where life is right now, you know what I mean? Um, you know, if kids get older, you know, can start doing a little bit different things. I mean, right now I have a two-year-old, you know, so it's kind of hard to, to do too much, you know what I mean? With their, you know, within reason. So, but, you know, I know as things get older, you know, we'll, you know, I'll be able to have a little bit more freedom and, um, you know what I'm saying? So. Right on. Yeah, no, um, no, definitely. Uh, you know, there's always a, a routine when you have kids um like you said they're all they're always around <laughs> just never go away <laughs> that just reminds me of big daddy you know he's like the kid is always around you think he wants to promise him, but he doesn't <laughs> uh, for sure uh, but <laughs> it's true though yeah i mean um, it is hard like when you have a, a two-year-old <laughs> you know they're in diapers so you have to, you know, make sure that you're always packing up a bunch of stuff and, um, you know, just kind of limited to things that you can do. Um, but, it, you know, as they get older, they definitely want to go out and they want to start riding their bikes or, you know, go skateboarding or, you know, uh, get out there and, you know, play basketball or, you know, whatever. Um, so it does open the door for a lot more as they get older. Um, my kids mm -hmm. probably me, let's go ride my bike, let's go play basketball, let's go play soccer, I want to play football. Um, so it definitely opens up the door for a lot more outdoors time. Um, you know, they're not in diapers anymore, so we don't have to pack a whole bunch of diapers or, you know, baby remedies just in case. Right. Um, so, you know, that's always that's always a plus. Um, but, you know, um, I definitely, you know, I'll go to the gym. You know, the wife, you know, will take care of the kids. I'll go to the gym. You know, leave any anxiety or built up tension there like i said and there's days where it doesn't work and there's days where it definitely works you know I'll, i i definitely i'll leave and i feel like i definitely left whatever i was carrying you know on the weights um so that's definitely something that i that i enjoy um but yeah it's kind of hard having like a like, like as a, a, a person a, a grown-up i guess he's an adult with a family and kids it is kind of hard sometimes to find a hobby that you can regularly do um you know, whether it be like by yourself or with a group of friends, because, yeah, I mean, it's always it's go, 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 you know, from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, 
Um, you know, sometimes you're waiting for your kid to go to sleep so you can go to sleep. Um, and, you know, sometimes you hit that pillow and you just knock out. And there was no time in that day to do any hobby that, that you right. may like. So I definitely understand that. Um, so do you have a favorite quote that you live by? Create your own shine, dog. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I love quotes, dude. There's a, some so many good ones out there. Um, I really enjoy the ones that are about, like, hustling. You know, and about, like... Um, the dream is free. Uh, the hustle sold separately. Um, you know that that's one that popped in my head. Um, uh, there's a there's a bunch of them that I you know. Um, but I think that a lot of them too can be, you know, depending on what kind of mood you're in. So um, I, I, there's one that I actually seen not too long ago. It said uh, it's all about passion not position and i'm like wow that's kind of deep you know what i mean short but uh super deep right it's about the, the passion that you have not necessarily the position that you're in you know what i mean like you could be the ceo and be miserable and you could be the janitor and love your job yeah you know what i'm saying and have that passion where you're like oh, man you know what i mean i'm about to kill today and you know i'm having a great day and you know what I mean? And you're looked at as the bottom of the totem pole, but totem pole, but you know what I mean? You'd be the CEO and be miserable as, as all can be. So I thought that was a really yeah. cool one, dude. It's about, uh, it's about passion, not position. Yeah, so I mean, that definitely backs up the statement as far as like success goes. Um, you know, success isn't all the money in the world. Um, you know, cause you could be the CEO making tons of money and you know, it's, happiness or success isn't the ferrari that's sitting in the ceo's driveway it's the it's the happiness that you get going home to your kids when they say daddy and they hug you and they give you a kiss you know absolutely that's, right that's that's mm -hmm. free you know you don't need to be rich for that 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 that's rich that's being rich right there um, all right oh no, absolutely and a lot of, i think a lot of time people get so caught up in in wanting to be rich and not just because you can be successful without being rich um you don't just have to be a rich person to be a, a success if that makes sense um you know All right you can be just well off or have a comfortable lifestyle that you know that's that that could be a success you don't necessarily have to be a billionaire to to be successful so i think sometimes that people do do take that that family time for granted or their kid running up to them and throwing their arms around them or you know like when you pick up your kid from school and he's like that's my dad that's my dad you know now mm -hmm. well, i just it just reminds me of when cameron was in in kindergarten um you know and he, that door would open and he'd just run out daddy and he'd jump up to hug me and then he'd, and you know and like or when my daughter was in kindergarten she'd do the same and she'd go that's my dad hey everybody this is my dad right here this is my daddy and I'm just like, oh, my God, you're embarrassing me because I don't want people to be looking over at me. Right. <laughs> you're like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Kicker off of your leg. Like, Get away from me. I don't know. You can... <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and those are some of the best memories that I'll have um, to carry out with me through my lifetime um, to help me on those dark days. Um, you know, even, you know, those times, there's those, those, those sometimes were the times where we were struggling hard and, you know, and we still are, but then I look mm -hmm. back at like how none of that mattered because my kids were still there to, to get me through that tough time, even though, you know, we were, you know, in, not in a good financial place, you know, or whatever it may be. Um, or my stress levels and my anxiety were just bad but those you know those times um i made them through and they were okay because at the end of the day i had my kids to come home to and you know and, and just seeing the smile on their face even if it was just something small like you know sitting at home you know with an ice cream or <laughs> sitting down with them and you know watching one of their cartoons and by the way i'm probably one of the only adults who actually doesn't like watching cartoons except for a very limited few anything new now is something that i'm not really interested in watching so when i sit down with my kids it, it, something because they found something super funny to watch or um because i just want to make them happy 
Um, and I right. think at the end of the day, that, that's success. Um, not, not the figure in your bank account, not the car in your driveway, not the clothes, the, the brand of clothes that you have. Um, it's that family that, that, that keeps you grounded and that, that at the end of the day is going to be there for you, regardless of any of that materialistic stuff or that figure in the account. Because at the end of the day, Absolutely. your kids don't care about that. They just care about you being there and being happy with them. So. Absolutely. I agree 100%, dude. So the next, <clears> series <throat> of question, the next series of questions that I have are just like fun ones. <laughs> um, so, you know, for everybody still watching, you know, thank you guys for, you know, stopping by watching. Um, Mike, thanks again for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, you know, awesome awesome session man you know from someone who went from bullying to battling anxiety and depression to now being a success and rocking an awesome company making products being a stay-at-home dad while still running a business um you know that's just amazing and that just goes to show everybody out there that you can too there's nothing stopping you except yourself um and whatever's stopping you because of that then you need to you know get some help no shame in that reach out to anyone that you feel, you know, could help. Um, my DMs are always open to anybody out there. Um, I'll link my IG down. You guys can follow me. And I'm, you know, like I said, I'm willing to talk to anybody. If I don't answer, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, most of the time I'm usually awake pretty late anyways, but I'm always up and willing to talk to anybody, help them out in any way I can. Um, but again, if there's something that you guys are struggling with, get help or seek a healthy hobby of some sort, but don't be afraid to speak out. It's definitely something that you shouldn't be afraid to speak about. So, right, absolutely. So let's get to those cool questions, I guess. <laughs> Favorite food or meal? Man, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm a big guy, so <laughs> I like, I just like food, uh, but I love, I love good, uh, good burger, uh, fries, like, you know what I mean? Like a good bar burger. Um, but I also love good, you know, some my mom's meatloaf with like homemade mashed potatoes and corn and corn and the cob. You know what I mean? I like uh I don't know, pretty much anything that involves food. I'll, I'll get right down and put some syrup on it. There you go. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, right on, right on. Yeah, I mean I have my favorites. My go-tos are like wings and nachos, <laughs> but no, right I'll, I'll get down with just about anything too. Now that you said meatloaf, man, I haven't had meatloaf in so long. And <laughs> I wish there was a place open for meatloaf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> favorite type of workout when you work out, what's your favorite type? Is arms, back? Probably my chest. Chest? Mm -hmm. right That's because I'm uh, well, you know, that's usually the one that you're most, you know, strong in. They're usually the, the ones that you hate doing the most are usually the ones that you need to. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, mine are arm. Arm days, man. <laughs> arm days. Yeah. <laughs> um, definitely not leg day, man. I've been uh, a few times, man. I've had a hard time making it out to the car. <laughs> I had to sit in the car for a minute. Walking like a newborn baby calf. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Favorite movie? <clears throat> oh man, I like I like movies. Um, I'm a huge Leo fan, so um, you know, there's a lot of good movies out there. Uh, The Departed, Gang of New York. Um, yeah. I don't know, it's, you know, uh, I, a lot of like old uh, gangster movies. I like westerns. So I, I'm one of those guys, man. You hit me with these crush questions, and I, I like so much stuff. It's hard to, you know, pinpoint a favorite, man. You know what I mean? I like. Yeah. I just I enjoy westerns, and I, I enjoy. Um, yeah, I even enjoy like reality, like TV shows too. But I know that's not a movie, so. Anyways, yeah, no, I, do, I do too, though. I mean, the wife usually is the one that watches them, so you usually get stuck watching them with her. So, I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm down with like that TV shows too, but yeah, no, the part of a good movie. Um, you said uh, Gangs in New York, right? That's another good movie. Um, say Aces, I think. 
Yeah, you know what a good movie is the True Grit, the the second one with uh, Jeff. Um, Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I only watched part of it. I think I fell asleep, but not because it's a bad movie. <laughs> it's still sure. at night. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no, that 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 is uh, Western. As far as Western, that's like Tombstone, Quick and the Dead, um, White Herb. <laughs> uh, Three Ten to Yuma. Three Ten to Yuma. Yes, really good movie. Yeah. Um, Fight Club would probably be my my top. That's in my top five at least. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Um, you know, every time. <laughs> um, favorite song at the moment or favorite song of all time? Um, I I don't know, man. I I really like uh, um, that song "Soldier" by Eminem. Okay. Um, you know, what song I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's the name of it. Yeah, no, I think um, it is. Um, like a toy soldier. No, not toy soldier. No. No, I'm a soldier. My shoulders hold up so much. Okay, I know what you're talking about. I just don't know if that is what it's called or not. I can't remember. Yeah, I know know he's a toy soldier song. (laughs) But But yeah, no. uh, Anyways, that was a. I I like that. Um, Until honestly, until Eminem got all political. I mean, I don't care about his political views. I just don't like the fact that he got all political. You know what I'm saying? I just don't like that kind of stuff. So. I place a little judgment on him now. I still love his music. But, um, and then there, there's a couple. I, I love music, though, dude. Like, I love music. So, it just depends Say on the anything. movie. Pretty much anything. But I, I just really like that song, I'm a Soldier, just because of the, the lyrics. You know what I mean? Like, he's, I mean, it's a rap song, but they, I think there's, to me, there's some good meaning into the, you know, talking about he, he holds up so much, but he, he doesn't fall or crumble. Right. And, uh, you know, I just, I just dig it. So it's funny that you mentioned him getting political. <laughs> um, and I mean, most time, if you're an Eminem fan, usually you're not a MGK fan. I mean, mm-hmm. most of the time, right? I mean, there are a lot of go hard Eminem fans out there um, who don't like MGK. But since him getting political, do you think that maybe helped MGK get some, some more uh, fans out there? Oh, maybe. <laughs> um, maybe help that Tom McDonald get some more fans. Hey, uh, yeah, I've I've heard a couple of his things, uh, of his songs, man. But, um, he's pretty pretty fire, man. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, um, he went he went at it. He went at him and Eminem too in a song. He called him out. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that might have been mm-hmm. the one that I heard because I think that was the one that was trending. Yeah, he called him out. He said, "He, he whatever he." Talking about you kill your mom, but now you you get offended or something. He he went he went hard on him. I was like, damn. I'm waiting to see if M come. You know what? M gonna is he gonna come come out on dude? But we'll see. maybe. I mean, he came back at MGK, and uh, I mean, I don't know. As far as like MGK though, the new stuff that he's doing, I think he should have done that like a long time ago. Honestly, it's not a bad album, that pop album that he did or whatever you want to call it. Pop yeah, I don't, album. I don't, I don't really like MGK too much. Not anything to do with him. I just don't really like his music. Yeah, no, uh, I, I really wasn't the biggest fan of him either. <laughs> um, but that new stuff that he's doing, honestly, I just feel like that was probably his calling, and he just didn't do it, you know, to begin with. I think he should have kind of maybe gone with that the whole time, but. I mean, just even as the way he dresses, his style is really punk style. So I think it's just right. really fitting for him. So um, what did you want to be when you were a kid? Uh, I, well, I wanted to be a professional football player. And then um, I used to want to be able to, I wanted to be a famous singer. Um. So neither one of those panned out. So now, now I'm slanging uh, ounces of beard oil. <laughs> ounces of fire. Ounces of fire. Uh, favorite car? Mm, 69 Camaro. Right. It's a good one. Uh, favorite sport? <clears throat> uh, football. Football. Favorite game or board game or card game that you that you might like? My favorite one. Uh, favorite game. Well, I used yeah, to love playing like uh, 
like pokers, you know, like uh, hold them. Oh, okay. You know, stuff like that. Right on. Uh, who was your childhood hero and are they still your hero today? Hmm. I'm, I don't think I really had one. I mean, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know, dude. I mean, I guess the broad, a lot of people would say, you know, be your dad or whatever, but you know, I mean, I respected my dad, but I didn't, even, I don't, I just never thought about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And now to look around and do I have a hero? I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? What makes it, what, what, I don't even know what, what would I have to consider a hero? I mean, a kid, you know what I mean? That beat leukemia. I mean, that, that seems like a hero, you know what I mean? Yeah, true. Or, you know, military, you know what I mean? Some of our military brothers that went out there and, you know, sacrificed everything, you know what I mean? So, right. I don't know, I couldn't, I can't really say that because, you know what I mean? There's there's some heroes out there that, you know what I mean? That I'll never know that, you know, so. Yeah, no. Yeah. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. I mean. That makes sense. Um, yeah, no, for sure. Funny you said, uh, you know, a child who, like, beats leukemia. Um, there's actually this picture, um, this big old bodybuilder, and then there's a little girl that he's holding her hand who's got, like, a, like, a rare, like, um, I want to say maybe it's, like, a blood or bone disease. Um, and the story behind it is, like, he, um, you know, uh, I'm strong because she makes me strong because of her battle. Um, it's like, a post that I saw a long time ago. Um, but that was really cool though. I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's crazy. You know, like, um, you know, I'm strong, but this little girl's stronger and it's a big old bodybuilder and she's a little tiny little girl and he's holding her mm. hand. Um, uh, that was just, that was just awesome. So yeah, that um, is awesome. That was really cool. Um, my favorite scent from the lineup that you currently have. Uh, my favorite scent is Motown. Um, and then the message and then Hellbent. And then I don't know, they're all good to me, honestly. <laughs> they are all good. <laughs> um, I was rocking the remix before it was even the remix for that was my favorite scent for a while. You know what I mean? I kind of play my own scents out, I guess. You know what I mean? Does that make yeah. sense? I, I wear them until until I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, I'd have to go with remix hellbent. I mean, they're all good though, so it's just hard to pick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look at the look, you look at the shelf. It's like, which one do I want? I don't know which one. You kind of just want to mix them all together and put. <laughs> all, right, all right. All right. So, what should we expect from you this year? Um, we can expect uh, for me to be hustling. You know, I'm gonna. I got a lot of CBD stuff I want to drop. So uh, that's that's the biggest thing, and. Uh, you know, just quality, you know what I mean? If I'm gonna make adjustments, I'll make changes, um, whether it be for the customer or for the company, whatever is gonna be, you know what I mean? Benefits both, it'll, um, I'm not scared to, to make the change. So, um, but as far as product wise, a lot of CBD stuff and uh, a lot of hustling, you know what I mean? A lot of grinding and, uh, that's 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 the main focus right now, man. Right Just on, trying to man. get the company to to uh, to grow. Right on, that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> I know that whatever you have in store for Bandbox next um, will fall nothing short but of great. Um, like I said, you make some amazing products, um, guys. That people out there watching know it's not because i'm on his website and it's not because he's my best friend it's because they really are good products i wouldn't just say that just to say it <laughs> but yeah I mean, like i said i definitely stand behind the product that you are you know putting out and i know that whatever you put out next is just gonna be just great thank you so but thank you very appreciate much for coming on i appreciate it again another great example people to everybody um you know like i said before from being bullied to battling anxiety and depression <laughs> to having some really big lows in life. Mike has become a success, um, not just in the beard community, but is in his own life. 
uh, for his family, for himself, and a great example of what can happen when you take charge, you own your truth, and you know that no matter what, you can be a success. So thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate you coming on, brother. Hey, man. I appreciate your time, bro. Thanks for inviting me. No problem, man. No problem. Everybody out there watching, thank you very much. This is episode two. This does conclude the episode, so make sure you hit that subscribe. Please share the video with somebody out there. Anybody who would like to come on, please shout me. You know, shout, shout out to me. DM uh, IG. I'll link that all down there below. I will also be linking down bandboxfellow.com down there for anybody bearded who may be watching. Go ahead and check out Mike's products. Hit Twitch15 on that code. Get yourself a discount while you're at it and get yourself some of that fire that he has that he said he's hustling. Uh, Hellbent, Remix, they're all good. Um, right thank you very much. <laughs> there you go. So make sure you guys hit a comment down below, hit that like, and I'll catch you guys on the third episode. Peace out.